in the last lecture we had started talking about the information and we tried to understand what does classical information mean and what does the phrase information actually communicates to us. Now what we concluded from that lecture is that the word information at least in the context of physics and technology indicates not what we understand normally qualitatively but it indicates a quantity which is a measure of uncertainty associated with an event. And when out of various possibilities of an event, a particular event occurs, the amount of uncertainty that gets removed, that is a measure of the information. So information was defined in some way in a negative sense about the amount of uncertainty associated with occurrence of the We define a function to make a, as a measure of such information. So what we said is that H m events with probabilities p1, p2 up to pm. So we wanted to get an expression for this quantity. And we said that this quantity has certain properties. Now, what we did is to first define a new function called f, which was simply nothing but h with each one of the probabilities the same. So, that is equal to supposing there are n events, so f of m is defined to be h 1 over m 1 over m h. Now we said that this function p of m must satisfy certain algebraic properties and they were that it is a monotonically increasing function of its argument. So f of m is a monotonically increasing function. So f of m is greater than f of m prime if m is greater than m. The other properties were that its value for f of 1 is equal to 0. This arose because if there is just one event, there is no uncertainty associated with it. The third property was f of m times n, if I am talking about a joint experiment, then this must be equal to f of m plus f of m. And the fourth one which had a longer expression was called a grouping theorem. Now we claim that a function which is constant times logarithm of m base of logarithm is unimportant, c times c is a constant times logarithm of m satisfies these four properties that I have talked about. Let us examine them one by one. Firstly you notice f of m square, I will take c to be a positive constant, f of m square is by definition f of m into m. And since f of mn is equal to f of m plus f of m, so this is f of m plus f of m, which means it is equal to 2 f m. And you can do an iteration and find in general that f of m to the power k is equal to k f of m. Not only that, I can write f of m as equal to f of m to the power 1 over n raised to the power n is just a, an identity actually. So that must be equal to n times f of m to the power 1 over n 
if I raise it to the power L, then I can show that f of m to the power L over n is equal to L over n times f of m. That is because f of m to the power 1 over n is 1 over n times f of m and you raise both the argument to the power n. And since we have said this would be general true no matter what powers we take. So, we say for any real number a I get f of m to the power a is equal to a times f of m. Now, notice that this function c log m obviously satisfies this because the left hand side would be c log of m to the power a and as you know logarithm prop has this property that log of x to the power a is a log a. So, therefore, this is satisfied by this logarithm prop. The second point is we wanted f of 1 to be equal to 0. This is trivially satisfied by the logarithm prop because log of 1 is equal to 0. Now, let us let us see why this is a good uh, function and the way it works is the following. Let m be greater than 1 and let r be a positive integer. Now, for any m, I can find for any m greater than 1, I can find an r which satisfies this relationship m to the power k less than or equal to 2 to the power r less than or equal to m to the power k plus 1. I, I claim that for given m and given r, I can always find k which satisfies, unique k which satisfies this inequality. Now, let us look at what it means by an illustration. Supposing my m just happens to be equal to 4 and I have taken r is equal to 2. So, I am looking for a number k which is 4 to the power k is less than 2 to the power 2 which is 4 is less than 4 to the power k plus 1. You notice that there is a unique k. It tell, tells you k is equal to 1 because 4 less than or equal to 4 less than or equal to 4 square which is 16. Now, since m is a monotonic function, it tells me that f of m to the power k, remember I said if m is greater than m prime, then f of m is greater than f of m prime and once I have this identity, then f of m to the power k is less than or equal to f of 2 to the power r is less than or equal to f of m to the power k plus 1. But by property of f, the these identities can be written as k f m because f of m to the power k is k times f of m less than or equal to r f of 2 less than or equal to k plus 1 f of m. Dividing appropriately, I get k by r is less than or equal to f of 2 by f of m is less than or equal to k plus 1 by r. Now, note one thing. So, we had uh, this relationship k over r less than or equal to f 2 by f m less than or equal to k plus 1 by r. This arose because of the fact f of m is a monotonic function. Now, I have a very similar situation with respect to the logarithmic function. 
and that is primarily because uh, I have m to the power k less than or equal to 2 to the power r less than or equal to m to the power k plus 1 and since logarithmic function is also a monotonically increasing function, I can write log of m to the power k less than or equal to log of 2 to the power r less than or equal to log of m to the power k plus 1. So, since log of m to the power k is k times logarithm of m, so I can write k log m less than or equal to r log 2 less than or equal to k plus 1 log m. Thus, even for the logarithmic function, I have this relationship k by r less than or equal to log 2 by log m which is less than or equal to k plus 1 divided by r. Both f of 2 by f of m and log 2 by log m they lie between these two limits and I have not said what is r all that I have said is let r be a positive integer. So, I can take r as large as I can or as, as large as I wish and then show that these two functions log 2 by log m and f of 2 by f of m are basically identical which tells me that f of m is logarithm of m. Well, actually this equation simply shows f of m is equal to c times logarithm of m, where c is the constant. It is traditional in information theory to choose c is equal to 1 and take the base of the logarithm to be equal to 2. So, I have used properties of logarithm in a way that what is the base it did not matter. So, therefore, I am free to use it and because of the fact we deal with bits in computing it is traditional to take the base of the logarithm to be equal to 2. So, with this let us look at this slide. So, we have now said that the uncertainty does not actually depend upon the value that the random variable takes, but depends upon the uncertainty associated with the variable. Now, what we do is the following. Remember our idea is to primarily find an expression for the uncertainty function h. What we have done is to get a relationship for the f of n function, which is the same function as h, but where the probabilities of possible events are all equal and we have seen the logarithm is a good function for that. Now, what we do is the following that suppose I consider just two events just to make it simple. So, my function information function uncertainty function will be h p 1 minus p by definition. Now, this quantity you recall our definition of the grouping theorem, which I will show in the slide here. So, if you use the grouping theorem, I have just two events, one with probability p and one with probability 1 minus p. So, we say that h of p 1 minus p how do you write using grouping theorem? Now, in the grouping theorem, it shows like this. Supposing I have got s equally likely events. So, we had seen that this is 1 over s, 1 over s, 1 over s minus there are two groups of events. First group has r events. 
So it is R by S. Second group obviously has S minus R even. So it is S minus R by S. And this quantity was shown to be equal to R by S times H of 1 by S, 1 by S etc. plus S minus R by S H of 1 by S, 1 by S. Now let us look at what these are. In terms of F, this idea you remember there are S number of units. So therefore this is nothing but H of S. This is, well, I will take this term to the other side, equal to H of, I keep it undisturbed, R by S, S minus R by S, plus R by S. Now, these has R number of terms. So, therefore, this can be written as F of R, because remember the argument of F is the number of events that are there having equal quality. And the other one is S minus R by S, F of S minus R. Rearrange them to write down what is F of R. Or F of S in this case, because I have got an F of S there. This is actually f of s, not h. So, my f of s is h of r by s, s minus r by s, and just rewriting it r by s f of r plus s minus r by s f of s minus r. Now, let us substitute, let us substitute our expression that f of m is equal to logarithm of m. And let us suppose that I have essentially two groups. So, what I get here is this, that this is because R by S, supposing I have just two things, so R by S is nothing but T and this is 1 minus T because I have just two groups here. So, I have said F of S is logarithm. So, if I do that, I get this term F of P 1 minus P that is equal to minus because everything is minus now. This is P and F of R is log of R. So, I get P log R plus this is 1 minus P log S minus R. And of course, the term which is there on this side since I have taken an overall minus sign is minus logarithm of So, this has been obtained purely by application of grouping theorem that I have a group A having probability P and a group B having probability 1. So, this I can do a bit of an algebra and get the following. So, this is minus P log R minus let us just add p log s and subtract p log s. And I have the remaining terms 1 minus p log s minus r so these two terms and then of course I have got minus log of s. So, look at this thing this term and the last term, I will write as P log of R by S, but R by S if you recall is P. So, therefore, I get minus P 
log of t plus this is t log s because I have added and subtracted. So, then I get the remaining terms which are there is remember that I can combine these terms that I have a these two I have already taken care of these two I can add and write it as 1 minus p log s. So, I have got 1 minus p log s minus r divided by uh, s. So, this is equal to 1 minus p log of 1 minus p. So, this is my expression for h of p 1 minus p. Now, if I had more events then it is readily identified we say h supposing I am talking about a collection of probabilities p i. So, this is simply equal to minus sum over i p i log p i. So, this is my measure of the information I am Look at some simple ideas. Supposing I am talking about a coin toss. So, coin toss is obviously given by h half half. So, which is equal to minus half log half plus 1 minus half log 1 minus half. And you can immediately see since I have said that the base of logarithm is 2. So, this is minus goes away I get half log 2 which is 1 and sorry which is half and this is also another half log 2. So, I add it together I get 1. So, we say associated uncertainty with a coin toss is 1 bit of uncertainty, 1 bit of uncertainty. Now, this is clear because a single bit takes the value 0 at 1. So, if you say head is 0 and tail is 1, then of course, there is one bit of uncertainty associated with it. If you plot h of p 1 minus p against p, two events, the type of curve that you will get will be like this. Obviously, once p exceeds half, it must have a symmetry because the other event then has a higher probability. Just to tell you what is the connection of this with the decision tree issue that we talked about. Let me talk about an event described by a random variable which has let us say following 5 relation possibilities x1, x2, x3 and x4 and x5. This has probability 0 0.3, this has 0 0.2, this is 0 0.2, 0 0.15 and 0 0.15. Total adds up to 1, of course. Now, if you go by the definition of H pi, I can easily calculate it with a calculator. So, I get this is minus. 0 0.3 log of course to the base of 2 0 0.3 minus 0 0.2 log 0 0.2 once more the same thing is appearing for the third event minus 0 0.15 log 0 0.15 and minus 0 0.15 log 0 0.15. You could just use a calculator and work this out that it gives you 2.27. So, it tells you that the average uncertainty associated with this event 
is 2.2 in bits. Average uncertainty. is 2.27 bits. Now, let us examine the same thing on our question answer wave. That is, now I have various events which have been listed here, x1, x2, x3, x4, x5 and I have given their probability. So, let us try to do a decision tree. The first question I ask is, is it x1 or x2? I can have an answer yes, I can have an answer no. If the answer is no, it simply means the group belongs to x3, x4, x5. If the answer is yes, then it means the answer is either x1 or x2. So, again I ask a question, is it x1? Now, if the answer is yes, I say the result is x1. If the answer is no, I say the result is x2. Now, look at this. I have had two questions to get at either x1 or x2. So, let me write two questions. If the answer is no, I have x3, x4 or x5, I ask the question is it x3. Now, if the answer is yes, I get immediately x3 to be the answer and obviously, I have taken only two questions. If the answer is no, I still have two alternatives. So, I ask is it x4? If the answer is yes, the answer is yes, it is x4. So, I need three questions for x4. If the answer is no, also I need three questions for x5. What is the average number of questions? So, this is 0 0.3 into 2. Plus 0 0.2 into 2 plus 0 0.2 into 2 plus these probabilities were 0 0.15, 0 0.15 into 2 plus 0 0.15 into 2 and this works out to 2.3. So, you notice the uncertainty here is greater than what is calculated using the uncertainty function or Shannon entropy as we call it. The Shannon entropy primarily gives me the minimum bits of uncertainty that any code that will have the optimal value of a communication code. Now, this is applicable to what is called a unique decipher decipherable code and that why it is called Shannon entropy we will see in the next video.